Hi there and welcome to episode 12 of the Knit Next Door podcast. You are joining me, Angie B, in my home, which is in Mansfield in Nottinghamshire, which is fairly centrally located within the UK. Um, I live here with my husband Richard and our two sons, Aidan and Ezra. Aidan is 13 and Ezzy is 2. We've got a Staffordshire Bull Terrier called Layla or Bernard. Uh, we rescued her from a shelter many years ago now. And we've also got two naughty Bengal cats called Lily and Teddy, and they're normally up to no good. But at the moment, actually, bless them, they're both fast asleep over there. <laughs> so we'll see how long that lasts. It is Saturday the 18th of May 2019, and it's been several weeks since the last time I podcast. Thank you very much if you're a returning viewer. Today we will be um, going through the results of the 1,000 subscribers giveaway, so stay tuned for that. If you're a new viewer, it's a show mostly around knitting. I do talk about crochet though from time to time, and also um, a sort of fairly new spinner and weaver, so very often I will talk about that as well. So if you wanted to contact me at all, please feel free to do so. You can find me on Instagram as angieb underscore 79 and on Ravelry, I am angieb1979. That 79 bit, yes, that is the year that I was born in and I have just celebrated my 40th birthday last month. I went to New York with my sister and I will be talking about that a little bit later on. There's a couple of sort of knitting related points that happened whilst I was there. So moving into finished objects then. These, if you've seen the show before, you'll recognise as Richie B's socks. These are some that I cast on for him on the way to Edinburgh Yarn Festival in March. And last time I saw you, I'd completed one of them, but now he has a pair. So yay, lucky Richie B. Um, they are lovely to knit. It's the um, Rose City Rollers pattern by Mara Catherine Briner. I'll pop a link to it. It's a free pattern um, on Ravelry and it comes in a, a littles version as well. So you can knit it from like a tiny baby right up to a giant six foot two man size. Um, so I use the old Norwegian cast on or German twisted cast on at the start just to give it plenty of room here over the, the ankle and stuff. Um, and then it just moves into like a, a twisted rib there over the, um, over the heel flap and gusset. And then it's just a straight tube which ends in a wedge toe and your kitchener it's shut. So I've made loads of these and they're a really, really nice fit. I gave, there was a pair I'd made last time which um, I showed you and said they were for me but they weren't. They were for my sister for her birthday which is the week before mine. So she's had those now as well and they fit her nicely. So they're just, they're just a really nice little quick, simple project. So there we go, nice palette cleanser. The yarn that I've used for these is a Regia. It's design line by Kathy Fassett and the colourway is myth. So the next finished object that I wanted to talk to you about is the top that I'm wearing at the moment and this is Sweet Vicious by Stephanie Earp. I'll just um, show you the front page of the pattern there. So this one really caught my eye because of this um, sort of striking tucked stitch pattern on it, um, something that I saw on Instagram originally. Stephanie is out in Montreal. I do believe she works at Espace Tricot as a consultant there. And um, certainly she's got a pattern being published later on this month in Pom Pom Quarterly. Um, so what I'll do, I'll pop a link to her Ravelry in the description below. She's got loads of really nice designs and a couple of free patterns available as well. So definitely she's worth taking a look at. Um, this one then, it was cast on at the bottom. Let me just show you. I made it with um, I made it with a twisted rib rather than the eye cord cast on that was suggested in the pattern. You knit it then from the bottom up. You separate underneath the sleeves and then knit the front and the back separately. And then um, I think it was a, a three needle um, cast off over the top to join the shoulders. Um, it was then finished with an eye cord just to bring the uh, the neckline into shape. And yeah, it's really, really lovely. I have barely stopped wearing this since I made it. <laughs> it's hardly been off my back. There, are, You will see if you follow me on Instagram, like there's loads and loads of pictures of me wearing this. Um, I went out to New York um, over my birthday as well and, and wore this actually on my birthday. It's, it's gorgeous. It goes with anything. It really, really does. Um, you know, you can kind of have a top underneath it if you don't want it to be quite as sheer. 
um, which is how I'm wearing it today. But equally, you can easily wear it without a top under it as well. So it will work in cooler weather. It certainly works perfectly happily when the weather's quite nice and warm outside. So it, it's just a really versatile piece and I think it's beautiful and I really like wearing it. And the amount of comments that I've had on it as well whilst I've been wearing it are, uh, are phenomenal, really. So definitely I recommend it. The, um, the yarn that I've used is from Marina at Pineapple Yarn. Um, and so the background, this sort of um, wine colour, is her Noe Kid Silk Lace. And that's in the colourway Sip Sip Knit. And then the foreground colour is Spice Rum on her Nanny Twist Sock Yarn which has a bit of sparkle through it as well. And um, yeah, I think I didn't even use probably half a ball of, of that one or half a skein. And the, the mohair I was coming close to the end of, I wanted to try and use as much of it up as possible. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is the result. It took me a little while to make. It's one of those patterns where you kind of need to be in the zone. It's not something I think I would probably recommend for kind of mindless knitting. But, you know, you, if you just sort of try and keep an eye on where you are in the pattern, maybe sort of make notes as you start to come into the, the shaping and stuff like that. What happened to me was um, I put it down for a few weeks and worked on something else. And then when I came back to it, I couldn't remember where I was. So I did have to kind of sit with the pattern and, and try and sort of figure out exactly where I was before I was able to, to continue and finish it. But to be fair, that really didn't take much time. And it was so so worth it i absolutely adore this this um this finished object okay then so the next thing i wanted to show you is a sock that i've designed um i didn't mean to design a sock i kind of did it by accident which just sounds entirely ridiculous but essentially i bought the yarn first and i really really loved it and i found a contrasting skein um, that i wanted to go with it um, so let me just show you these two. That's that's these. Um, this is um, an indie dyed blue faced Leicester that I bought from a lady called Ishrat. She has an Etsy shop called Fruitful Fusion Dyes, and she's only down the road from me in uh, in Nottingham. Although we met on Instagram, as you do, and um, this colorway it's just it's everything. Let me show you one in the in the skein itself. So I have this one as well. Um, and you can see how me this is when I just hold it up in the room that I'm sat in even. Look, you can see these colours are reflected everywhere in here. <laughs> and it's it's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. It's a work of art. It really, really is. The speckles are so delicate. And um, the inspiration behind this particular colourway is um, the area around um, Lake Victoria and the lake itself. Um, Ishra said that her great grandparents were from that area, and um, so this is where she took her inspiration from. The name of it is Emiremb, which means peace in the Ugandan language as well. So I just thought it's it's gorgeous, and I like mm. the story that sat behind it and the beautiful colours and everything. So I had to have this. I had to have it when I saw it, and I wanted to make it into something special. And so when I found this in my stash this is by um Koopnitz. so i think is that fiber space yeah i think it is and it's their um socks yeah so Koopnitz socks yeah and this um i can't remember i did look up the colorway but it's gone again um but i'll pop it in the description bar um but it, i thought it really just picked out those little flecks of blue and really complemented it ever so nicely so my idea was I wanted to do something with contrasting, um, I wanted a sock with contrasting heel toe and cuffs and just really use this to, to, to display this yarn to, um, to, you know, to its fullest, just to pick out those colours. Um, I looked through the patterns that I had and I cast on something that I thought would work and it just, it really didn't. It, I wanted something that had enough interest in the pattern that um, you know there was some texture there that it wasn't just a plain vanilla sock um, but equally I wanted something that didn't have that much texture that it detracted from the yarn um, and just I, I couldn't find anything in what I had so I pulled the dictionaries off the shelf of which I've got many 
and just had a leaf through and found a design that I, I particularly liked and this is what I've come up with. I wanted to do something that was toe up rather than top down. All the socks that I've knit recently have been top down so I wanted to try something different in that respect. So um, I've cast on at the toe and then knitted in that direction. Let me just pop it on a sock blocker so you can see that pattern. Here we are. And yeah, I, I think, hopefully you'll agree, that there's enough texture in there to make that sock really interesting, but it's not so much and not all over that it, it detracts from the beauty of that yarn. I just think I'm, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. I think, you know, it's just, it's quite delicate um, and it's quite interesting, but without being overwhelming. I put, um, as, as I got really cocky, as I, as I got up here, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do something different on the cuff as well. So I did a little um, cabled rib inspired by the um, Guthrie that I made by Caitlin Hunter. The, um, the, the rib on that was this cabled rib and I thought how nice that would be on a pair of socks. So that's where that came from. And then I had to really fiddle about to try and figure out how to do a heel flap and gusset backwards. Oh my Lord, that took me forever to do but I think I've got it I think I can remember what I did I didn't write any notes which was really clever um, but yeah as soon as I can figure out what I did I will get this written down and turn it into a pattern that hopefully you'll be able to have a look at yourselves if you want to I put a little bit of interest just on the back though which is completely invisible like this so let me just turn it around so you can actually see what I'm showing you Okay, so I just wanted a little bit of something to be an extra detail on the back of the sock. Obviously, you don't know, sit there looking at the back of your sock, so I didn't really want to put an all-over pattern, but I wanted something just to give it a little bit of extra interest in that area. And let me show you then the pièce de résistance, which is this stitch pattern from the top, so that you can see both sides of it. You only saw half of it. But I think this given that the inspiration was Lake Victoria, is awesome because these look like little fish tails all the way down when you can see it from the top. And I just think that is gorgeous, even if I do say so myself. So I'm really, really pleased with this. No idea what to call it, um, but look at that yarn. Look how that shows it off so, so nicely. Um, yeah dead pleased with it so when I finish it I'll let you know and then there may be a pattern for you to buy or it might be something I make free I don't know I've not decided yet I've got to finish it yet but yeah there we go that's my sock that's my that's my half object or my hoe um, as some people refer to them okay there we go so then um, I have put on a little bit more work onto my Shetland lace shawl so that's this one here cobbling around by Laura Nelkin. This is the first instalment of her year-long um, kit along, knit along club thing that she does called the N Club. Um, so there are three designs that come out. You get a kit in the post and then everyone knits together. And this is the first instalment for this year. And so it's going to be an absolutely beautiful Shetland lace shawl. Um, she eases you into everything really, really nicely. Um, this is probably, you know, one of the more complex designs that she'll do, but there's plenty of tutorials available through the pattern. Um, you know, there's video links to, to anything that, you know, might be considered a particularly complex technique. Um, and, you know, you, you, you walked through everything fairly, fairly easily and handheld, I have to say. Um, but yeah, this is, this is how it's coming out at the moment. You, um, it, it, it really doesn't look anything when you hold it up like this. Um, you really need to sort of stretch lace out to get the full um, benefit of the effect. Um, and I can't really do that whilst it's on the needles, but you can see sort of these bird's eye sections and then, you know, these sort of more scallopty looking bits in the middle. Certainly you can see how beautiful that yarn is. What I do um, if I'm doing a lace repeat is I like to put a marker in between each repeat so that if something's not quite right, I can see you know exactly where I've gone wrong. It's like 450 odd stitches 
at least um, in the round at the moment. So I would rather just, you know, stick these markers in and then have to try and do stuff by counting along an entire row. Um, I have made a horrible, horrible, horrible mistake on this. It's all now been corrected. Um, but basically, um, I'd done all of the middle and I'd got to the edge and I was embarking on this lace. I did 26 rows. Let that to sink in 26 rows in the round of this ever increasing lace pattern um, and thought everything was fine and everything was fine to the chart but I was following the wrong chart oh yeah oh yeah I was really really pleased when I found that one out um, so yeah well done and uh, so I had to knit the whole thing backwards because of course I haven't put a lifeline in I still haven't put one in so oh well um, some people never learn <laughs> and um, but yeah, that's all been sorted out now. I've unknitted back to where um, it was last correct, which was the end of the um, garter or reverse stocking at whatever it is section here. And then um, I've put on probably about another six rows or so of the lace pattern again since that point in time. So still picking away at it and I, I really really love it I put it down for a little bit because I fell out with it when I did it wrong it's not its fault it's mine but there we go I still fell out with it um, and that's where it is now in the meantime um, the next installment of the end club has now arrived um, this is kind of still a bit of a secret ish so if you're in the end club and you don't want to see it and it hasn't and yours hasn't arrived yet it should have arrived by now so I think I'm fairly safe but if it hasn't for whatever reason and you don't want to see this then do skip to the next section I'll pop a little timestamp on for everyone else who is still here who doesn't mind seeing this here we are Laura always tries to think of yarn blends that you won't have used before um, things that are unusual um, little accessories that are unusual she really likes to think about how her beads coordinate and that sort of thing and so far what we've got is a little teaser card she will or Laura will produce um, a Facebook live video um, to fully announce the, the pattern and we'll all get to see exactly what this is going to knit but in your kit you get like a little teaser and the name of it comes out first that video will be out next weekend the 20 something of um, of May I think I think it'll be 25th I'm not sure somewhere around there it's another week or so yet anyway and um, yeah this is what the design is I don't know what it's going to be looks like maybe it's going to be some sort of shawl shawlette not sure we'll see we'll see and this time it's come in a camelback um, water flask, <laughs> which I thought was really cool. We've actually got some of these already. Um, Richard swears by these. He takes them to work to, to drink water. And so now I've got one of my own with N Club with Laura's logo printed on the side there. So how cool is that? And the yarn is actually inside the flask. So in here is some yarn that's been specially dyed. Laura works with um, various different indie dyers and stuff to have things made specially for her kits. You can see this has been dyed specifically for Laura um, by the Periwinkle Sheep. And this is Alpaxis. So it's a 50% alpaca, 25% silk and 25% linen blend. There are 437 yards or 400 metres in 100 grams. And this is in the colourway coral lip so yeah that's absolutely gorgeous and then to go with that are these beads here you when you join up to the club you have the option of with or without beads you don't have to have a beaded option and all of her designs can be knitted with or without the beads but i chose to go with the extra bling and that there or these are the beads that have come with this one you can just about see those so yeah i'm really looking forward to finding out exactly what this is going to be and i'll be able to tell you more next time so i have cast on a sipola sweater so this is sipola uh it's designed by boylan knitwork so caitlin hunter and um, i'm going to do the short-sleeved short version of this one 
and um, yeah, mostly because I'm lazy, <laughs> so I didn't really want to have to spend too much time hanging around on uh, on Sleeve Island. But equally, I wasn't sure that I was going to have enough um, yarn to make it with longer sleeves. I will have, but that's by the by now. Um, but also, um, I I really think it's going to make a really nice summer top. The fabric that's being created by the gauge that um, that Caitlin's chosen for this particular pattern is really, really quite light and airy. So it's going to be perfect, I think, kind of um, as a summer piece. So that's that. The yarns that I'm using are this one here for the contrast. This is, again, by Fruitful Fusion Dyes. So this is Ishrat in Nottingham. And that's her label there. This is um, a superwash merino sock yarn. Um, so 75-25 superwash merino nylon. And it's in a fingering weight or four ply as we call it here, which gives it roughly 400 meters in 100 grams. Um, so that's this one. The colorway is morjan, um, which means coral. And yeah, it's kind of a, a corally, peachy pink with sort of violet um, and fuchsia pink speckles. And I just, again, it's, it's beautiful. You need to check out Ishrat's work. Go and have a look um, at her on Etsy. I'll, I'll link to her shop below. But um, yeah, she has just had a, a recent shop update. Um, I might or might not have bought something in it, can't confirm uh, or deny. But uh, yeah, do, do go and have a look. She's got some beautiful stuff available. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that one, that's the contrast color. And then pairing that with this one here. So this is by um, Malabrigo. Um, so it's this one, it's called Abril, which means April. And again, this was cast on kind of as, like a birthday present to myself um, so I cast it on just the night before we went over to New York to celebrate for my birthday and um, yeah I knitted on the plane there on the plane back a few times whilst we were actually out in New York as well so there's going to be lots of special memories attached to this one so yeah the uh, the main colour is in Malabrigo sock which is 440 yards um, to 100 grams and yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about that. It's a super wash merino. This one is just pure merino. There is no nylon content in, in this yarn. And that is what it looks like in cake form. And here is where I've got to so far. It's gorgeous. I love it and I've tried it on. I'm making a size that actually fits me this time rather than making the size that I want to fit me. I measured myself and chose something appropriately, uh, which is, is new to me for 2019. Um, and yeah, I, j I love it. I love how it's coming out. I am using the technique that I've spoken about before in terms of um, the, the colour work whereby I kind of try and block as I go along on the needles it's something that Skandia mentioned in her podcast um, and basically you just sort of stretch those stitches out whilst you're knitting um, so let's say these were your stitches you would stretch them as far as you could before carrying a flow past which then um, it, it stops it from doing any puckering it makes the, um, makes the colour work sort of sit nice and flat um, it's a bit disconcerting while you're doing it because it looks like the floats are going to be too baggy but they're not as you keep knitting it all sort of evens itself out I'll just turn this inside out for you so that you can see um, my floats see how that's working out I do catch my floats usually roughly every sort of three stitches or so um, I really do try to make sure that I don't catch a float on top of where I've previously caught a float though as well. I've learned from experience that that's not a good look. Um, you start to sort of really see the, um, the, the, the colour in the back come to the front if you do that. So try to take a look at where I've previously caught my float and, and not stack them on top of each other. But other than that, um, that's what I've got for now. The body you knit for about 12 inches from where you separate the yoke um, and sleeves um, off of the, the body itself. So this needs to be 12 inches long. I think I'm about 11 and a half inches or something like that now. I'm very, very nearly done. I have tried it on and it, it fits really, really nicely. There's loads and loads of ease in the body, but not so much that it's sort of, you know, bagging off in all directions. Mm -hmm. And over the bust, um, I've chosen for it to have sort of 
um, just a couple of inches um, of ease, but but th there is ease there rather than it being my usual sort of spray on style top that I've knitted in the past. The little um, progress keeper stitch marker in the back here is by Cedar River Knits. Now this was something that my friend Amelia had um, commissioned specially for myself and for a group of her, her friends um, and we met at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Now, Amelia is, um, is Canadian so hence the maple leaf but yeah this was specially made just for, for us. So that's beautiful, that stayed on there the whole time and yeah there we go. These um, these skeins of Malabrigo I have been alternating um, right the way through the body. Um, I thought I was going to end up um, with with awful um, differences between the two skeins otherwise. Um, one that I had was quite a bit darker um, than the other one and what I didn't want was to have sort of you know one really light chunk and then a dark chunk underneath or, or vice versa. So I've gone with more of a sort of a, a stripey look which I think looks looks great. I'm really, really pleased with it. So that's just been alternating skeins as I've gone. Um, and again, using the helical knitting technique that I've spoken about um, in previous episodes um, that I first learnt about via Jen Arnold Colliford um, knitwear. So again, I'll put all the relevant links in the description box below but yeah that's where i am with that one hopefully by the next time you see it i should have finished i should be able to to wear this so yeah there we go so i have another little cast on and that is this one here this is wingspan by kyle vey in uh, collaboration with blue brick yarns now this one you may well have seen it if you uh, if you're active on instagram and ravelry it was on the front page of ravelry and i think it's been doing the rounds on instagram it seems to have been quite popular but oh my goodness i just saw it and thought how amazing it was really really struck uh, struck me as you know just the most gorgeous thing i've seen in a really really long time totally ridiculous and i don't need this at all but i needed to make it so i've cast it on anyway um so that's that one um, I've chosen to make it with this yarn, which I just think is absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to see how it turns out. This is called Infinity. The colorway is Infinity and the yarn is My Melody by um, Walter Elm. So this is something that I ordered online and um, it's just a it's a cotton acrylic it's a 200 gram um, cake you can buy it in I think you know multiple different um, uh, amounts you don't have to have a 200 gram I think they do it in smaller and, and, and larger amounts but I chose this based on the yardage that's required for the pattern um, this one has got um, 760 meters in it and I think the pattern required 730 so um, it should fit quite nicely into that cake and then the gradient is hopefully all going to get used as well so um, there we go I'm knitting from the middle so at some point I'm going to need to pop something in here just to preserve the um, the integrity of the of the cake whilst I use it you can get them to um, cake these up with the um, the colours the other way around as well you, you can just ask for it to come however you want it to be to be made whether you want the dark in the middle or at the outside is, is entirely up to you as part of the ordering process so that's cool each one of these cakes as well comes with um, its own little progress keeper as well so I just thought how cute that one was it's got a little elephant on it so that's the yarn I'm using and this is where I've got to and it's coming out really really cool it's a weird, weird thing to knit and at the minute I'm having to refer to the pattern quite a bit but the way that it's been written is that there are some sort of intuitive instructions towards the back that just teaches you more about how it's constructed um, than the actual sort of you know specifics of put this stitch here, put that stitch there. Um, which is aimed at sort of helping you to just kind of not have to look at the pattern quite so much which I thought was a really interesting way of, um, of setting a pattern out but yeah you can see I've got the first rows of feathers quite defined there now um, so this is just an evening's work I've not really spent much of any time on this yet that's the back 
and that's the front. Lots and lots of short rows involved, lots and lots of um, make one stitches of different varieties. Um, and yeah, at the minute it's something that's taking a little bit of brain power, but I can see as you get into the pattern that it's going to be one of those that sort of it becomes intuitive. And certainly, as I say, the designer has given um, lots of information about how to kind of um, make that process even easier. So yeah, that's that one. The other thing that I've been doing a bit of work on is the Committed Cardigan by Cassandra Rizzardi. I showed this one last time as well. So this is a cardigan that's constructed largely in garter stitch and double knitting panels. And by double knitting, I do mean it creates a double thickness fabric with like um, the appearance of stockinette on both sides. So this is what I have now so far on that cardigan. So this is an entire front panel that I've finished now. So it's um, a drop sleeve construction. So that will sort of sit over the shoulder like that. This will form um, sort of the, the front opening of the cardigan. And you can see that is the rest of it. I love the way that the colors are playing together. The yarn is um, by an indie dyer that I found on Etsy a while ago called Tammy Wee Colors. Um, these double knit sections I think are just beautiful really really beautiful and you can see how that effect is the same on both sides due to that sort of double knit technique it is quite a tedious technique it really is and the name of the cardigan kind of reflects that she um, Cassandra said you know you have to be committed to knitting this thing because you know um, it, it is a lot of work. Essentially, these sections here, you hold two different yarns together, double, and just knit them together. But when you come to the double knit sections, you kind of have to separate off into a stitch for each individual strand. So you, your stitch count doubles, um, and then you have to sort of knit and then purl every other stitch. So you sort of, you, you knit a stitch, purl a stitch, knit a stitch, purl a stitch. So like a one by one rib, but in between each stitch, you bring both of the yarn ends either to the front if you're purling or take them to the back if you're knitting. That keeps the yarn inside this double layer of fabric that's thus created. Um, so you kind of knitting the front and the back together and then like marrying them, fusing them together, I guess, um, which is producing a beautiful technique, it's technique, beautiful fabric even. Um, but yeah, it's so time intensive, so time intensive. I've been working on this piece now for a year, more than a year, and I've finished one panel of a cardi. So I've still got that to do again and then the whole of the back um, before I can even think about the sleeves. I cast on the back now and that's where I've got to. This pattern um, at the moment it's only in one size and I think it's kind of the idea is most people will be able to fit in this one size. Um, I know certainly as patterned it would kind of have drowned me the size that it was so I've decided to take a few inches off of um, the back piece and both of the side pieces but really it's constructed just in in big rectangles so that's that's pretty easy um to do i just kind of like looked at what my gauge was and how wide that would therefore be it's intended to be you know an oversized cardigan but there's oversized and then there's kind of really really oversized so i, I took um, a couple of inches off of, of each of the pieces and i think that should work quite nicely um, so that's where I've got to with that. I'm putting that one away again now. I think I've kind of, I've had my fussy out with this one for this year again now. I did the same last year. I knitted so much and then put it away and then I've picked it up again. So I think this is going to be a, a much longer term work in progress for me. But um, yeah, hopefully that will show my commitment that one day I eventually will finish it and wear it. It's beautiful. I love it. It's really, really nice. Um, but it's it's one of those ones kind of, um, you know, you, you know when you've had enough and it can then just go away for a bit and then come out another time when I fancy a change again. So then I have another sweater that I've cast on and made quite a bit of progress on since I last saw you as well. And that is the My Boy Lollipop by Nancy Ricci. Um, so that's this one here. If you're on Instagram, you'll 
probably have seen this one. It's been around for, for quite a while. I've had this in my queue for quite some time. But actually, I met this lady. I bumped into her um, at Nitty City whilst I was in New York. So that was just amazing. I'm like, ah, I know you. Uh, hi, can I have my picture taken with you? And <laughs> fangirling for a change. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I sort of mentioned to her that I was planning on knitting this top. And when I got back, I was looking at her Instagram and she was having a, a knit along for it. So it really sent rude not to join in at that particular time. Um, so I cast it on a week or so ago, something like that. And this is where I am. You will probably notice that I've made the body quite a bit longer than you perhaps will have seen it elsewhere. It's, it's cropped. I think this, this bit's supposed to be like about that long something like that but i just i wanted it to be that bit longer in the body um so yeah that's where i've got to and it's gorgeous it's so so lovely i'm not going to pop it on because i want to fully finish it before i um i show it to you properly but yeah it's it's so so nice and you know what it's absolutely flown off the needles this yarn is something i've had in stash for ever it's something that my mum gave to me like years and years ago it's um it's a louisa harding hand dyed yarn um louisa harding being sort of fairly commercial brand um and it's the grace it's a merino yarn um, it's really really highly pigmented and to the point where as you're knitting with it it comes off on your hands so I'm expecting quite a bit of bleeding when I uh, when I come to block this and and what have you but um, that'll be fine that'll be okay I've had that before it's not a problem again I'm alternating skeins because there's quite a bit of difference between the balls of yarn that I had and I'm choosing with this one to alternate um, three ways with the skeins as well um, so that hopefully I get quite a nice blend there and not too much um, pooling in any particular place. And um, yeah, I think that seems to be working quite nicely. It's a lovely, lovely design and it's really, really quick knit. It's only taken, as I say, a few days really to, to do this. I've been working on so many other things at the same time. It's not that I've just spent all my time on this and yet I've got nearly a completed sweater off the needles again um, in, in a week or so. Maybe it's a fortnight now, might be two weeks. But anyway, I'd, I'd done most of this like a week ago. I've just not picked it up for a bit. Um, yeah, so that's really all I want to say about that. Apart from to say, as I say, um, Nancy has a knit along um, on her Instagram page. If you go to her, she is um, at getting pearly with it. And um, the knit along is running all the way through May. So you've still got plenty of time. You've got a couple of weeks yet that you could perhaps cast this on and, and join in with that knit along. And there are prizes each week if you um, if you post in that thread. Um, so yeah. So um, just to show you the ball band, that is the yarn that I'm using. So Grace Wool, it's called. Did have a brief look for it and couldn't find it online so i don't know if that's something that you can still get hold of or not but that's what it is so i'll tell you what i can probably double dip my cows here as well can't i um leslie and barbara's um crafting from your stash stash cal 2019 is still ongoing so i'm gonna i'm gonna enter that one in there as well oh yeah cool double dipping <laughs> this is living in a bag that i bought whilst i was at nitty city basically bought it for the fabric and then when I found out who it was by um, it was absolutely brilliant it's a Crafty Toads bag um, I don't know whether you've seen their podcast the Crafty Toads podcast um, but they're um, two sisters and they're out in I think New Jersey and they dye yarn and they make project bags and they're really lovely um, so again do check out their podcast but yeah it was great when I saw who the bag was by I was like well that, that sells it then that's done it He's lovely, it's so lovely. Look at the inside. Got these lovely pockets and things. Beautiful fabric and it's so sturdy. And it's nice to have like this kind of shopper style that you can just kind of put over your arms as well. So New York, lots of special things, special project, lovely memories. That's that. 
So then, just while I'm on the, the subject of Nitty City, um, I don't really want to do like a massive haul or anything. I just wanted to show you the bag that Pearl at Nitty City gave me to put all my purchases in as I left. And then also, um, I bought one of these. I wanted stuff that was, you know, specifically about the shop itself. So I bought one of their um, little project pouches. So this is really, really nice bag. And then I got one of their pins as well. Um, and while I was in the shop, who should walk in but Louis Boria of Brooklyn Boy Knits fame. And I was like, ah, oh my God, it's you. And oh, can I have a picture taken? And he was, oh, he was just the nicest chappy you could possibly wish to meet. And I was showing him all my pins and I showed him my Gigi pin because um, I have the um, Gigi shopper pin. And he was like, oh, you could have my pin. Oh, I don't think I've got one. And he had a look through his stuff and he had one left. And so he gave me his pin. And it was his birthday the day before mine and we were all hugs and it was just so lovely. And um, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> it was actually the Brooklyn um, yarn crawl whilst we were there, but do you know what? It, we were so busy, we were only there for a couple of days. And um, to get all the way out to Brooklyn and then try and go around all the shops and I've got my sister with me and she's, bless her, she really humoured me and bought me yarn and stuff whilst we were in the shop for my birthday. She got me these. Um, this one, uh, or both of them actually, were from What the Fluck. What, what the Fluck. That's not what it is at all. It's What the Fluck. Now, there was a Freudian slip if ever there was one. Oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, this one is <laughs> I Will Always Be With. It was all sort of Disney-inspired colourways um, that were included in his... Um, trunk show that day and then the other one is abstract Coraline and this one was specifically for local yarn shop day which was the same day as my birthday um, so yeah I do check his stuff out online as well absolutely gorgeous stuff absolutely gorgeous so thank you Steph and thank you Brooklyn Boy Knits and thank you Nancy Ricci and thank you Pearl and um, that whole experience at Nitty City was absolutely wonderful and if you happen to be out there do go they've got the most beautiful place it's a real Aladdin's cave you know there's sort of there's all sorts of stuff and the more you keep looking the more you you see and there was a group of people there all sort of knitting away and chatting and it was just it was lovely and warm and welcoming and it felt like you know that I'd kind of always been someone who went to that shop it was it was great it really really was We've got a very special guest who is going to be joining us. I can just see her making her way around now. Um, a number of you have actually asked to see if we would be able to get a guest starring uh, role from my mum. So here she is, the original Knitter Next Door. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> it's been a number of you have been uh, asking me to feature my mum on the show for quite some time now. So here she is. <laughs> so this is Janet, my mum, and my mum spends a lot of her time crocheting and knitting and making all the things, and um, a lot of the stuff that she does is with a charity focus. Um, so my mum has been knitting um, dogs, um, hats 
for quite some years since um, the death of their puppy, Gracie, from a horrible kidney disease. Um, my mum wanted to do something that would help contribute towards the um, kidney research for Manchester Terriers. So I'll let you talk some more about that and show the good people what you've been making. Right, well, this is one of said hats. It's a bit like a balaclava. So, uh, I think that's what all I can say about it. It's a balaclava with a tassel. Um, There's another one. What sort of yarn do you tend to use? Yeah, I tend to use either iron or double knit. Okay. And is it knitted flat or is it in the round or how do you make it? It's knitted uh, flat. I altered the pattern. The original pattern was in the round. Mm -hmm. But I'm not one for knitting in the round much, so I altered the pattern to suit myself, and it ended up being like this in um, uh, on, uh, in the flat with two needles. Okay, cool. So do you start at the bottom, or where do you start? Where does it start? It starts here. Okay, so um, across across that section there yes, with the ribbon. The okay, rib, yes. And then it goes up there to the point. Okay. And then we pick the stitches up. Oh, down there. Here. Yeah. Knit that bit. Knit that bit, and then down to down to there, and then we finish with a pico edge. Okay. And then it's stitched up. There's the edges. Well, where have I stitched it up? There, look. It's stitched up there. There. Okay. So how long would you say each one of these takes you to make? About a day. Okay. And how many of these would you say you've made? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds. Uh, literally, I've been making them now. I'll tell you the little story about it in a minute. Uh, I've been making them for five years. Oh, my goodness. And I would imagine I've made, well, I make two or three a week, so I'll work it out. <laughs> okay. And basically my mum provides all of the yarn and all of the knitting time and gives these away to the Manchester Terrier Association and then they sell them for, <coughs> what was it, around about five pounds, five pounds each. Um, there are pictures of these in use and what I will do is I'll put a little um, picture on the screen that was actually featured in a tabloid, a national tabloid of um, a Manchester Terrier wearing one of these hats. Uh, was it called the Mabel hat? It is, yes. Yeah, to, uh, to Crufts. So, uh, yeah, my mum's knitting has been on the national news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, with regards to the Mabel hats, um, as Angela's just said, we lost our first Manchester Terrier to congenital kidney failure. And all these hats are... are to, to aid Manchester Terrier health. Um, I've recently, and, and I think Angela would like probably like to put one on, a picture of um, a trophy that I've just won this year. Because uh, uh, now I'm an honorary member of the Manchester Terrier Club. And the, this uh, trophy was to thank me for, for all my knitting. <laughs> Another um, charity that you do a lot of work for is a local church um, trust that have um, sort of a, a charity shop as part of, of the, uh, the work that they do. And the charity shop um, donates to, to many, many local causes um, for all different sorts of things. So mum spends a lot of time doing knitting, particularly around Easter um, and other times of the year for things that can be actually sold at the charity shop as well. So over to you. This is one of them. This is a little chicken and the shop has been open now for oh, six years, seven years probably and every about the end of January, February I start knitting with a vengeance and I make about a hundred or so of these every for every Easter. I make them from about the end of January up until whenever Easter it happens to be. So that is one, and then the other thing that I like to make, 
but I also make room for two little children that live next next door but one to me um, they, they are little Easter baskets and this is this is a little Easter basket <laughs> So these are sold in the shop as well? They are, yes. And how much do you sell these for? They're sold for one fifty, <laughs> and the chickens are sold for a pound. And the chicken has a little surprise up his bottom, and that <laughs> is, <laughs> he can lay an egg. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> They're so cool. They're so cool. You must have knitted hundreds and hundreds oh, of them. Oh, yes. Well, here we go again, you know. Say on average a hundred a year for seven years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and some years it's been distinctly more than a hundred as well. Hasn't yes, it, I know it has. That. And uh, there's an old gentleman that I know. He he likes to buy oh about three dozen or so. He sends them to Cyprus okay. to uh, um, a children's orphanage. I think it is oh, out there. Oh, that's so cute. That's so lovely. Right. So your knitting is global, isn't it? I mean, these these dog yes. hats these go all over the world. They're sold at uh, Manchester Terrier shows, aren't they? But they are. she also, um, when I say she, um, talking about a lady called Estella, um, who is a Manchester Terrier breeder over here that my mum and dad purchased their, their dogs from because they did replace Gracie um, with um, a, another dog that had been rescued called Pixie, who then had a puppy who is mum and dad's current dog called Kylie. And um, yeah, people people order these hats, don't they, online and yeah, stuff from yeah. from Stella, um, and they uh, they're heavily involved with the um, Manchester Terrier Association, aren't they? In, they in this are country, very much so. She's the secretary of the club. Right, right. Okay, so this is just a selection of the hats. Um, the original Mabel hat pattern was a free pattern, wasn't it, that you found it on was, Ravelry? It was, Ravelry, So yes. what I'll do is I'll link to that, and I'll also link to um, my mum's version of it, which she's actually um, converted to be um, able to be knitted in the flat. So if this was something you wanted to look at knitting yourself, you've got different options there, including what my mum's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh you look beautiful you look beautiful good girl so apart from your charity knitting you do lots of other knitting and crocheting and stuff as I well do, don't you yes i make uh, baby blankets for my friends who have recently had babies and grandchildren and so on and so forth i make uh, scarves and uh, shawls for myself and you made a lot of dishcloths and things, dish haven't you, that have been sold in shops? Uh, uh, and yes, and uh, mostly they've been sold at the church bazaars. I've made all oh, hundreds of those over the over the years. <laughs> Goodness me, I've lost count how many I've made. You've brought a couple of um, finished items, haven't I you, have, that you've yes. made recently? Yes. So um, let me. I'll hold it up, and you can talk us through what this one is. Then. It's a feather and fan uh, pattern. Uh, you, you can pick that up anywhere near enough and Angela and I uh, I hadn't got enough of this yarn that she's showing at the moment to complete it so we found something else that went with it and then we had to work out and keep weighing and working out how much we could do and uh, we came up with this there's so much of, of one one uh, colour, I think it's Hey J, that one. This one's by Hannah Mackey of Hey J Yarn. So this is an indie dyed um, merino sock yarn. Mm. It's got some sparkle in it, something I bought on Etsy and gifted to my mum. And then we've sort of gradually faded it um, by just adding a little stripe here and then another couple of stripes and then a couple more stripes and gradually gone into this one here which is calligraphy by Madeline Tosh which was something I'd had in the stash for absolutely ages and ages and ages when we knew there would definitely be enough to finish it off um, we merged it back into the Hey J yarn for the other side. And you say that the feather and fan pattern, it was, you just cast on and just kept doing the pattern, didn't you? It's yes, not yes. anything that you've particularly took a pattern from. No, no, it, it's known as feather and fan. Sure, sure. It's just a particular stitch pattern that you've just repeated for a specific amount of time. That's right, yeah. So you just decided how many stitches you wanted and cast on. Yeah, yeah. And what type of cast on do you use? Is it just a, a cable cast on? It is, yes, yeah. 
I mostly use that. I like so that kind of for a cable cast on, it's like a knitted cast on, but you knit between the stitches um, before you make each new stitch. Um, and then I've blocked it for you, haven't I? You did, very and kindly. It's grown loads, hasn't it, with blocking? Oh, it's beautiful now. It really opens out this um, this lace pattern when you do mm -hmm. that, doesn't it? I think that's the back, isn't it? And that's the front. Mm -hmm. There we go. So yeah, that's beautiful. So that's that one. What else have you been making? Um, this, this was one, one I, I. Well, I thought I liked it. When I finished it, I didn't like it. <laughs> and when Angela had blocked it, I really did like it in the end. It's. Um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> there you are. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> it's a lady who calls herself Twink Knits. I don't know her surname. But her Christian name is Nicola. Okay. Um, and it's she's hand hand dyed the yarn. I'm not sure. I think it's hundred percent merino. Merino. Okay. Uh, I, I can't remember. You know, I don't know where I started with it now. Can't remember. Um, let me just take it off and have a look. Oh yes, I started at, at the at the bottom. And you yarn forward, knit one at each end. Right, right, to, 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 to make it, it increase. And it makes it bigger, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's each end of every row, yarn okay. forward, knit one. And then it's just alternating Altern sort of garter and stockinette and, and then, then some yeah. basic lace. And the, the, the uh, lace yeah. work is just yarn forward, knit two together. It's, okay. it's nothing... Uh, Complex. Difficult. No, yeah. no, it's okay. ever so easy to do. And then when you cast it off, <laughs> presumably it was along the long end, was it, that you cast off? It was, So yes. did you do like did a stretchy, stretchy cast, cast off? cast off, yes. Okay. So is, that the, is it something like Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast off? That it you is, did? yes. Yeah. So you can find um, tutorials for that online. Was that suggested in the pattern or was that something that you no, chose that to do? No, that was something I chose to do because I thought it would work better. She said, the yeah. lady suggested something else. I can't. Actually, I remember what she suggested, but okay. I felt that uh, it would suit the stretchy cast on better, which which bore out. It it, it, uh, it gave me lots of room to stretch it out for you, didn't it? It did, and it grew <laughs> loads. It really grew. So um, definitely, I mean, you were you. I remember you being really quite disappointed oh, with it. She I sort was of absolutely. she said, oh, I've "Finished this, and it's rubbish, and I don't like it." And I was like, "Well, just wait a minute. Let's give it a bath. Let's let it relax, yeah. and then stretch it out and block it." So and now uh, I'm doing another one. <laughs> yeah, she likes it that much. She's going to do another one. So uh, there we are. You also crochet, don't you? you do a oh, lot of crochet. Oh, I do a bit of crochet. Yes, I do. So what have you got here then? At the minute, well, it's inside this gorgeous, absolutely fabulous bag that my friend in Limerick called Terry O'Shea and I wouldn't like to tell you how many of these bags I've got now. <laughs> and how many you bought for me? Several. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my cottage number nine again. <laughs> got a fan here. I bought oh, for my yeah. mum um, one of these bags from um, Atlantic Knitscape, didn't yes, I, last yes. year? And yeah, you've been kind of Terry's biggest fan ever, ever since, haven't you? Ever since, yes. <laughs> so this is um, another one of those crossbody bags that I was um, showing you before. Um, but there, there we go. Anyway. Thank you. Inside? Inside is this star blanket. At Shaw. Hello, Hello, baby. Yes. Yes. Bring on slides. Okay. Come round. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, this is the shawl blanket. It's very, very easy. It's actually on um, Ravelry. I f well, I think it's on Ravelry. Is it a free pattern? It is a free pattern, okay. yes. Any so, idea what it's called? Uh, I, just Star Shawl. Okay. And it's now the, what's the chap who call himself? I know he says something about spiderettes. I, I'm not quite sure now, but anyway. I like. I start off uh, using his uh, pattern, but then after so long, it, it's it's so easy. It's like falling off a log. Um, so I don't bother with the pattern after the first about five rows because you can you can work it out for yourself. It's um, the points you do uh, two treble, two chain, two treble to get your point. Okay. And to get your dip, 
you miss two stitches out. Right, right, okay. And other than that, it's just it's just trebles. That's all it is. That's UK terminology, by the way. So that would be doubles in US terminology, mm, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, and the um, the yarn that you use, <laughs> the yarn that you're using is. He's saying welcome to the Knitter Next Door podcast for you, everybody. Thank you, Ezra. So the yarn that my mum is using is this one, which is by Schepius, and it's their Wanderlust, which is 100% uh, acrylic. It is really, really soft. And um, this shawl, then, who's this for? It's for my friend, uh, Elaine. Okay. Uh, she, she, I don't know what it exactly is wrong with her, but she walks with calipered walking sticks oh. and... She's a she's a beautiful lady, and uh, she said pinks and greys were her favourite colours. So uh, I decided I would make her one to cheer her up. Oh, that's lovely of you. And thank you. Thank you very much. So that's your knitting and your crochet, okay, nice. and I think we're about done, aren't we? I think that's about all I've got for the moment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for joining. You'll have to come back. I I'm will. sure everyone will agree with me. <laughs> I'll come back if you want me. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks very much, Mum. You're very welcome. So those of you that watch Chevy Rell's podcast will know that she is currently hosting a couple of um, knit-alongs, make-alongs, and one of them is based around knitting something from your knitting books or making something from a book. And so I've been having a look through my knitting books, of which I've got loads and I barely ever knit anything from them. And I'm really pleased that she's kind of spurred me to do so because I've found this little book out and in here there's a perfect summer top that I think I will be making to join in with Chevy's cowl. So that's this one here. This is called Vesperis and um, it's by um, Old Design. So Sarah Alderson of Old Design. Um, all of the patterns in this book are in one way or another inspired by the world of, of Harry Potter and um, yeah I just thought this is beautiful it's a lace weight yarn so this will be able to be made with a single skein um, of yarn and um, yeah it just creates a really really lovely sort of light and sheer fabric this was um, a sample that I saw at Yarndale that was actually been knitted up and, and that's how come I ended up buying the book because I was so taken with this particular garment and I'd forgotten all about it. So um, thank you Chevy for the, for, the, for the cowl and for reminding me to have a look through my books. I found loads of different things that I want to make now so um, we'll see. I'll be entering all the cowls. Do check out Chevy's um, podcast though. It's brilliant. She is a laugh a minute she really is such an awesome awesome person and um yeah her cows are looking really exciting and really fun to get involved with so i've actually been doing a bit of crochet since the last time i saw you as well um i kind of i picked my hook up because i was feeling a little bit um down in the dumps i guess feeling a bit miserable a bit frazzled and none of my knitting projects were particularly calling to me but i still i wanted something to kind of you know keep my hands busy i don't really like to be just sat but i didn't really fancy doing any of my knitting if that makes sense so um i had a look back through um the cupboard and found an old um blanket that i was making and here it is that's this one here there's a couple of crochet alongs going on at the minute as well one of them is um marta from martushka yarns is doing a crochet from your heart um blanket cowl and um, I thought this kind of matched in with the aim of that cowl really quite nicely because um, the thing was it was sort of you know crocheting something with love um, and this particular blanket oh my goodness Ezzy as soon as I pulled it out of the cupboard was like oh, what's that mummy I love the colours and it is it's just so bright and cheerful and happy um, the yarn that this is being made from albeit it's just a ball of sort of cheapy acrylic that I won in a raffle um, I won it from the local yarn store that uh, yarn store that's since unfortunately closed and my good friend Sarah ran that um, with her friend Nori and I've just got so many lovely um, memories attached to that place and so it's, it's nice kind of to sort of honour them by finishing off this little whip and um, Ezzy is absolutely 
um, delighted that I'm making it. It's like, oh, mommy, are you making me a pattern? Is it a pattern for me? <laughs> and he keeps cuddling it and he's so cute with it. Um, the other thing about this as well is it's by my favourite designer, Daydree Eyes, my favourite crochet designer, should I say. And albeit it looks just like a standard square, it's not. It's done in a spiral construction, which is really, really clever. So you can see it starts here and comes round and round and round and round. And so every side has slightly more stitches um, than the one before. And it's just made in this big spiral that just keeps going round and round. Occasionally you kind of, you can correct the sides if they're not quite looking just right by just adjusting the stitch count very slightly in the corner. Um, and you can just keep it square in that way and yeah, it's it's come out really really nicely I've not had to do anything to change the colors. That's the yarn that's done all of the work for me. It's so soft and squishy um, and the um, The emphasis behind this pattern is really nice as well. It's a free pattern You can find this on um, Deidre's website, which is the um, look at what I made dot net and um, she has offered this as a free pattern but you can also buy it in kit form which I have done in the past and here's one that I completed much much earlier and it's called Joy's Journey. The kits are in um, Norse sock and wool which is a wool by Scrapius and again you can see it's, it's the same pattern but very very different yarn that I've used this time. And um, yeah, this, this was something I made um, before I had Ez, and this now sits on Ez's bed. Um, the pattern is actually intended for people with dementia or Alzheimer's, and it has this lovely sort of bobbly um, finish on the outside of it. The idea being, it's like one of those twiddle knit things, I don't know whether you're aware of them, but basically it's intended to give like a really gentle stimulation and something for people to do with their hands when perhaps, um, you know, they, they need that, that, little, that little bit of extra stimulation. Um, and Joy, the lady who is the namesake of this blanket, was a lady that died and she um, was someone who um, had been suffering with um, with, with dementia in the late stages of her life um, so yeah that was sort of the, the, the meaning behind this so this is Ezzy's mummy made it blanket but it's what he calls it and this sits on his bed so now it's got a second partner so that's this one I've also been having a go at doing some hand dyeing and that was with some merino fibre that I had. It's pure merino, it's not superwash or anything, so I had to be really, really gentle with it to try not to, to felt it. I think given the nature of what you're doing, if you're not using superwash fibre, it is inevitable that you'll get some small amount of felting, but um, you can kind of, you can work with that. Um, but uh, anyway, this is this is what I came up with, or at least this is a sample of what I came up with. I will pop a little bit of footage in. I'll see if I can, I, I did take some videos. I'll see what I can splice together and just give you an idea of kind of what I did and how I did it.
is the finished product. So I'm really pleased with how that came out. Um, it was always going to be a pastel rainbow with me because that's just kind of like what I am. <laughs> I am a pastel rainbow. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 nice. I thought I thought I might have felt it. I thought I might have gone a bit overboard with it, but actually spinning it up, it's spinning up fine. And I've since um, let me show you. <laughs> Uh, I've applied a sample of it as well and it, it comes up really really nicely um, this bit didn't really have any pink in it I just I just I literally just spun a bit of it just took a chunk off spun the whole thing up just to see how it would come out and if the if the yarn would be usable and it's, it's perfectly fine I don't know what I was worried about it's not it's not felted it's it, it's it's lovely it's nice and soft um, but yeah you just kind of start to, to to doubt yourself I guess when it's something you've not done before um, but yeah this is an example of that spun up so there we are that's how that's coming out I wanted to keep the colour changes sort of fairly long what I didn't want to do um, whilst I was spinning it was to mix it up too much so I didn't want to strip this along its length rather I wanted to work with a chunk of colour at a time um, so you get sort of a longer section of any one colour before it transitions to the next the reason behind that was I thought if I mix it up too much it's literally just going to come out skin coloured it's just going to mix all of these together with it being a pastel rainbow that'll turn into like a peachy brown and you won't really see the individual colours in it so I've tried to keep them sort of fairly separated whilst I've been spinning it so we should get some sort of rainbow yarn and um, as you can see this was done with some blue and green and they've sort of held held up quite nicely through that spinning process this was Navajo plied um, or chain plied um, and um, so that's the technique I've shown before whereby you kind of make just a, a giant crochet chain and just keep keep um, pulling a loop through the previous loop and letting that twist together um, but I think what I will be doing for the main one is um, two singles and then ply them together as a two ply. So this would be a three ply, um, but this is more of a two. Or it's going to be a two. This is a single at the moment. That's not a two ply. That's a single. One. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something I'm working on. was representative of I think it was about an hour and a half just um, chopped down into about 20 seconds there for you so um, you kind of get to appreciate um, you know how that looks as you as you fill in the bobbin up I, I'm really really enjoying my spinning the technique that I've been using for this one um, is again I didn't really want to um, mix the colors up too much I wanted to try and keep it the same as it is in here um, so I've not been splitting along the length of the um, of the braid particularly rather I've just been trying to kind of spin off of the end and you do need to sort of air it and, and pull it apart a little bit but once you've done that spin across the end side to side and that seems to work nicely and hopefully won't mix the colours up too much that I will muddy them it's gorgeous isn't it absolutely gorgeous so that's my spinning project I've done some more weaving on my little sample it loom that I bought a couple of months ago and um, so what I'll do is I'll just pop you a little bit of footage in of me weaving this piece.
out so nicely. What I wanted to do was just another plain weave piece. I wanted to really try and work on making those edges as, as straight as possible and um, just to try and produce a, a piece of fabric without making mistakes in it. And I think I've, I've got that. Um, it's two cotton yarns. Um, I wanted to make something um, that would make a nice light summer wrap and um, I have finished it off using a sewn technique to bind the um, bind the warp threads in place. So this is just a, a like a hem stitch. It was a tutorial that I found on, on Blueprint, as I do have a subscription to that. I have a year-long subscription, which gives you access to essentially every class that's available on there, Blueprint being what was formerly um, known as Craftsy. So this particular tutorial was um, a lady called Angela Tong, and it was really, really um, comprehensive tutorial as to how to do this um, sewn bind off technique. Um, so yeah, that's that. And I'm, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The warp threads um, are in um, Schepius Whirlet, which are these sort of mini cakes that complement their bigger Schepius Whirl gradient cakes. Um, I had this one in stash for a very, very long time. Um, and it used essentially the entire 50 gram cake to make. Um, the weft is um, a gradient cake um, from Rico Designs, which is the uh, cotton degradé. That's something that I bought from the local yarn shop when um, they were still in business. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's produced a beautiful fabric that is really nice and even. I have um, washed and finished this. It's been folded up for a bit, so hence it's got a little bit creased, but you kind of get the, the general idea. I'll just pop that on. It's made a nice lengthy piece of fabric and it's, it's very, very nice to wear. Very, very nice indeed. So that's my weaving escapades for, for this time. Not really got much of anything else to say about it. I think next time um, I do a piece of weaving, I want to try something a little bit more complex. I think I've got plain weave sort of fairly um, down pat now. I think I kind of know what I'm doing with that. So I want to perhaps try something um, with maybe a different type of pattern on here or maybe like a, a clasped weft or, or something like that. I don't know, not decided yet, but um, that's my weaving for this time. So then I have the honour of announcing a winner for the Knit Next Door 1K subscribers giveaway. Got all the entries here. I'm going to uh, fold them up and pop them into a dish and we're going to draw a winner old school style. If you remember, the prize is this beautiful project bag from, uh, from Terry at uh, My Cottage Number no. 9. Um, so a lucky person is going to win this. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a montage of all the beautiful entries that I got. There were so many. Um, I think we're looking at close to 50 here. So as many pictures as I've got, I'm going to just pop them into a little show for you now.
And so, inside the prize <laughs> are all of the entries. And I thought what we would do is we would get my lovely, beautiful assistant, Mr. Richie B, to come and choose us a winner. So, <laughs> you better get a good one. <laughs> are you ready? Thank you so much for entering, everybody. Oh, that's a look. Oh, oh, let's have a look. We have got an Instagram entrant, uh, SC3499. Um, this lady describes herself as a fan of karate, knitting, cars, and she's a geek gamer. Oh, yes. Awesome. Like Richard B literally like has just come from playing Warcraft to come over and choose this. And, oh, yeah, I remember this one. She knitted a unicorn sweater. And um, I think it was for her daughter, but she did say on her comment that she was tempted to knit one for herself as well. So that, again, the winner is SC3499. Um, that's her Instagram handle. And yeah, she knitted that beautiful unicorn sweater that you will have seen in the montage. So well done. If you want to get in touch with me, um, either on, probably on Instagram in the messages would be the easiest thing I can sort out getting your prize out to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> so I have had a little bit of stash acquisition um, that was from a yarn festival that I went to, which is a new one that has just started in Buxton this year. So that's the Buxton Wool Gathering, and it was held at the Buxton Pavilion um, Gardens. It's an absolutely beautiful um, venue. I'll see if I can pop a little bit of a, a clip in here. <laughs> didn't take any footage of the inside. Um, I got there really, really late on the last day and so I was more interested in just having a look around than trying to record it and what have you. So I'm really sorry about that, but um, I'm sure you'll be able to find other people perhaps that took some footage of that and some photographs online if you, if you look it up on Instagram. But um, my purchases were mostly um, fibre and fibre craft related for my spinning. I got this um, chunky bump of fibre from Coastal Colours and um, this is a camel and silk blend. I just thought how lovely it was and I've never seen anything like it before so I'm looking forward to creating something with that. I got a couple of braids from a company called Felt Studio who are um, available to find on um, Etsy so I got this sort of bluey colour and then the purple and blue sort of fairly predictably for me I guess I'm holding it up and it's all the same colours that I always go for but still they're beautiful and there's a reason I always pick the same colours and they suit me and so there we go and this is again um, baby camel and silk and then finally last year at Yarndale I got um, this braid from um, Cat and Sparrow so um, they happen to be there and they had another two braids of the same thing and I was sort of saying you know I get these braids and then you know 100 grams it's it's plenty but it's not really enough to make a garment from and I thought this the colors that it were that it were that it was um, would make a, a really nice garment so I bought um, another two braids so that I can actually spin something to knit something this time rather than just spinning aimlessly and um, Tommy Trujillo from Squirrel Pie Productions um, is doing sort of a, a, a fibre along and also Grace and Mina Phillip um, so that's uh, the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast and the Knitting Expat are also having like a, 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 a spin and make something along so I thought possibly this could be something that I might use to enter in those different um, knit-alongs and make-alongs and spin-alongs that are, that are occurring at the moment. Um, so yeah, this is from um, Cat and Sparrow and um, this is actually the last that um, they're going to be doing of this particular blend. Um, so I bought the last two braids that were available. This is a Corridale 
Blue Faced Leicester and Mulberry Silk and Pearl Fibre Blend. I became aware of the um, Buxton uh, wool gathering via my friend Hannah, um, Hannah Mackey from Hey J Yarns, um, because she was vending there. And whilst I was there, I bought two of her little Lucky Dip um, packages. Now, these are such a cool idea because they're only a couple of quid each. Um, and you don't know exactly what's going to be inside. You know it's going to be a mini skein, but the colour is going to be... who knows? But if you've seen Hannah's work, it's all sort of really brightly coloured, one-off um, or very, very small batch um, skeins that she does. And they're always gorgeous, they're always beautiful. So I just said, look, you choose two for me, but they better be right, and if they're not, I'll send them back. <laughs> So she gave me these ones. She says, well, you know where I am. So uh, there we go. She gave me these two and they're gorgeous. They're amazing. Let me show you what we've got. This one is the first one. Look at that. How beautiful is that? And then the second one that I bought was this one. So that's going to be perfect for some contrasting heels, toes and cuffs and possibly um, some squares on my little... Uh, memory blanket in the back there so those are my little mystery skeins so thank you very much Hannah they're gorgeous then the other thing that I got was um, a, a little orifice hook um, for pulling the um, yarn through the orifice in my spinning wheel and this is um, a little cute animal so there he is Hi. I, don't, I don't know why why but it's it's cool one other little thing that I wanted to show you and that is a couple of mini skeins that have been really really generously given to me by a lady that I've made friends with as a result of having the podcast and that lady is called Sarah and she has given me these three beautiful mini skeins of yarn to add to my memory blanket so they're going to be going into that as soon as I get a chance to pop them in. They're gorgeous, they're going to go in the um, little bag um, that my other friend Amelia made for me with some skeins that she gave me and then also Sarah bought me this little um, progress keeper from Crafty Cat Nitty Bits which I just thought was so so beautiful and thank you so much that's so appreciated so finally I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody for coming along and watching the show again I really hope you've enjoyed today's content and getting to know my mum a little bit and um, yeah, it's been wonderful to be able to announce the, uh, the winner of my giveaway and do get in touch with me and I'll make sure that that prize is sent off to you as soon as possible. And um, yeah, thanks everyone and I'll see you again next time. You take care now and happy knitting. Everybody, they're all for me, and then they're the next door.